Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week I have a fun and snake-filled field experience to share with you. I recently attended Michigan Wetlands Association's conference. And as part of that, was able to go on a field excursion with professional herpetologist David Mifsud. And um, we had a great time and we got to see two of Michigan's native garter snake species, uh, Butler's garter snake, which is now listed um, as special concern in the state of Michigan, and uh, the more common occurring eastern garter snake. These two spe species are really hard to tell apart, um, <clears throat> especially for those just starting out in herpetology. And so um, being able to see them both in the field um, and go through those key characters of how to tell them apart was really a great learning experience. I owe a special thank you uh, to Dave um, as the senior herpetologist and owner of Herpetological Resource and Management. Um, he kindly allowed me to share his teaching skills with all of you. Um, as he went through those key characters um, in the field with us. And uh, Herpetological Resource and Management is a conservation company dedicated to the protection and stewardship of amphibians and reptiles. Anytime you get to spend um, in the field with Dave, you uh, certainly will learn a lot. I also need to give a shout out to Autumn Baker um, who took some great photos while we were in the field um, and allowed us to, to share those, including some great close-ups of the species we were, we were seeing. So thank you, Autumn. So because Butler's garter snake um, is a rare species, I'm not going to divulge the location of the field trip, but um, it was a really lovely fen site, so it's a groundwater fed wetland with um, a dominant vegetation cover of shrubby sinquefoil and twig rush, both um, very nice high quality site species. So I'll let uh, Dave explain as we take a look at some butlers and then eastern garter snakes. Yeah, I mean, he's got that mark mm -hmm. on the head and the uh, lack of the, the constriction. Yeah. So a couple of the diagnostics that we use, um, for those who were here on Tuesday, I talked about butlers a little bit. First of all, very nice find. And an important reason why we never use the J word or the C word. <laughs> it's not just a common anything. Everything is important. Everything is special. Most things. So <laughs> characteristics that we look at. Uh, Eastern garter snakes and butler's garter snakes have a black tipped tongue. So they have red. I'm going to show them. Do they smell like you? They smell like Marl? No? Okay. Um, they have a black tipped tongue. Ribbon snakes do not. Here's a quick look at that uh, black tipped tongue of both the butler's and eastern garter snakes. The butlers and ribbon snake have very similar patterning to actually differentiate, to confirm that it is in fact a butler's, you have to go seven rows from the dorsal and you count the scale rows. In this case, that's if you only have a small segment to work from. We have the whole body, which is very fortunate, otherwise it'd be kind of a sad day if we only had a piece of it. So what Dave is referring to there, if you have the snake in hand, um, you can tell the three species apart, so butlers, um, eastern garter snake, and northern ribbon snake, uh, by counting the rows of scales up from the largest belly scales um, behind the, the snake's head. So eastern garter snake, um, the light stripe is confined to scale rows um, two and three. On a butler's garter snake, that stripe occurs um, on row three um, and includes half of the adjacent half of rows two and four. And um, for northern ribbon snake, that yellow um, 
stripe is on scale rows three and four. You'll notice, um, I say that they are the, um, the, uh, the bodybuilder of the garter snakes because they have no neck. They just go straight to this. <laughs> and to me, it kind of looks like a nine millimeter uh, pistol round. Mm. It's very rounded and comes straight back. There's no compression or oh. constriction. And when you have, or very minimal amount. An Eastern garter snake, they have like these broad jaws and it really tapers mm -hmm. in and very almost exaggerated. Mm -hmm. With ribbon snakes, you'll also have white on the chin. So we're lacking all of those. Uh, this one probably has fed recently. It's a little girthier, no offense. <laughs> and one of the other diagnostics that we use is they often have a little orange or uh, gold color scale. Black tip, I see it. Oh, yeah. cool. They have oh that tip oh, on their head. So, so. Yeah, can you point to the gold again? Yep, so right on the top of the head, okay, hang on. on the very top of the head, I don't want to constrict her too badly, but there's a little scale that has kind of a gold pattern on it, really small. Oh, yeah. And that is indicative of a butler's. So here's another look at that um, head shape with... Um, out a constriction behind the head so no neck head going straight into and um, about the same width as the body and then here's a close-up of that uh, yellow spot on uh, the large scales towards the back of the head another distinctive feature of Butler's garter snake so this as far as I know is first time I ever found a butler's. Well, I didn't find it. So this is the first butler's at this location that I'm aware of, which ties back to the importance of continuous surveys. If you don't look for things, you're never going to find them. And if you don't go back out, you'll never know what might be there. Uh, Eastern this time, Eastern Garter. You see how that, that turquoise color that she has. And same thing, that constriction after that. So it has more of an elongated head. Well, you really sting the nostrils. Mm -hmm. So you notice, so I'm going to try to support her here, but also wanting her to kind of let her head hang a little bit. Or even from the top view. Hi, right, you. It tapers after the head oh. and then widens out. Come here. Instead of, the Instead of that, you know, chunkier no neck <laughs> but even here it has some similar patterning on the sides but a uh, butler's or a ribbon will never have this turquoise patterning on the side mm. oh, remember i was talking about easterns have more constriction so if you look at the head it tapers in butlers and easterns both have the black tip when so when it flicks its tongue next you'll see that look your tongue like, <laughs> like it. No, no. There it goes. Uh, so yeah, this is like a very recent hatchling. Anyone else want to see a baby Eastern Garter snake? Oh. <laughs> yeah, this one. You're thinking this is the first year. This is first year for like first couple of weeks. Oh really? Yeah. So they hatch late. Yeah. So they're like yeah. end of August, um, early September, typically. So the, this one doesn't have it as pronounced, but the reason I had said that that was an Eastern garter snake is there's that dorsal line that they have. Easterns can be incredibly, um, they have a lot of plasticity in their co color pattern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some populations that are completely beige and yellow. Some that have a lot of this checkering. As you go further north, particularly like, um, the Beaver Island Archipelago, you'll find some that are blue and pumpkin orange. Uh, so the Eastern Garter Snake can be found uh, throughout the upper and lower peninsulas of Michigan, whereas the Butler's Garter Snake um, is restricted to the lower peninsula and mostly the eastern half. It goes a little bit further west in the south central part um, of the state. But 
I hope that helps you being able to see uh, butlers and eastern garter snakes one right after the other going through those key characteristics and certainly any herpetofauna you see uh, report to the Michigan Herp Atlas. I'll include a link for that. And uh, I hope you have successful herping as you get out this fall. Take care. Have a good week.